Today's video is brought to you by Manscaped.com, the premium brand for men's grooming and hygiene worldwide, dare I say, internationally, across the galaxy. Ladies and gentlemen, Manscaped is trusted by more than 8 million men worldwide for their trimmers, hygiene, and shower formulations. And today, the engineers have let me know they've come up with a whole new product, the Weed Whacker 2.0 Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. Have you ever done a job interview, come home and realize, whoa, my future employer can see the whole jungle between my nostrils? Well, if you had the Manscaped Weed Whacker 2.0 nose and ear hair trimmer. You could use a 7,000 RPM motor, advanced steel blade systems, upgraded cutting performances, and absolutely whack away whatever weeds you had in your nose. It even comes with that skin safe tech to reduce nicks, snags, and tugs. Because let me tell you, pulling any hair is a very painful endeavor. You gotta make sure everything is up to snuff. Now, of course, it's also cordless, rechargeable, and a battery life with up to 45 minutes of runtime, so you could really plan these things. And of course, if you have the peak hygiene plan, you can replace a uh, blade every three months because it gets delivered straight to your door. And then, of course, when you're whacking off, you're keeping it clean. Of course, with the Weed Whacker 2.0, it'll be included in every tool set, meaning you get it with the Platinum Package 4.0, the Performance Package 4.0 as well. So no matter where you go, the Weed Whacker 2.0 will be in your life. And let's face it, long hair, major turn off. You gotta let Manscape be part of your daily grooming routine, ensuring that no hair is ever out of place. Go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off and free international shipping when you use promo code SOG at checkout. Thank you, Manscaped, and let's get to the video. Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and boy oh boy, the title of the video is no joke. I am offering $10,000 USD to find one image on the internet, the original source, the archive, if you will. I'm putting up the bounty. Now, if you remember a little bit a while back, uh, I made a video where I talked about how people were searching for the Jeff the Killer image. In fact, there's an entire community around it. And uh, it's this community that's putting in the effort, the image analysis, to find this one interesting image from the internet. Now the uh, smile.jpg image, the Jeff the Killer image, whatever you want to call it, is an image that necessarily has been related all the way back to one of the most infamous creepypastas of all time. Now if it's one thing you know about my channel, one of my earliest starts was Haunted Gaming, was Creepypastas, I covered internet scary stories. I narrated them, I analyzed them, and at a time I used to think they were actually scary. That's until I entirely grew up. So ladies and gentlemen, why is this so important to me? I can't forget the origin point of my channel, okay? While I may do commentary videos now, tech-related videos, the occasional deep web, I started off and got popular with creepypasta content. And while creepypasta content isn't necessarily so popular anymore, real horror on the internet to me lies in some of the interesting ARGs, the various analog horror series, and then of course, let's not forget emergency alert scenarios that will absolutely leave you in anxiety if you choose to go down that rabbit hole anytime which I highly recommend you do. There's a lot of great channels out there and a lot of amazing stories to be told. But of course, creepypastas were internet campfire stories where somebody sat around, wrote a cringy story, and people read them on the internet at two in the morning on 4chan's X and got kind of scared. Now the reason why this story was important was because it had one of the most infamous creepypasta images attached to it. This image right here. Now of course, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if we ever go back to the story, Hello guys and gals, welcome back to Creepypastas, yeah! This week we're not doing a gaming creepypasta, but instead we're doing a pretty popular creepypasta called Jeff the Killer. No, 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 that's it's hard to hear, ladies and gentlemen, god damn. But of course, this story, the Jeff the Killer story, is not so much important again as the image is. Now, I'm upping the bounty, because so far there has actually been some level of progress being done. There's a lot of misinformation, which is primarily what I want to tackle in this video right here. And to maybe touch upon a lead that might be a bit promising. So to show you, this is the Jeff the Killer community. Now there's a Discord attached to it, and it's a small but very active community of researchers and people looking into finding the origin point of this image. Now last time we looked into it, the Jeff the Killer image, it's kind of theorized that this is from 2003, 2004, maybe a little bit earlier than that. Basically, it was a Photoshop competition where people were looking for, unfortunately, one individual that may not have hit the genetic lottery, 
and uh, they were basically photoshopped all the way from their original face into this ghastly image as a form of mockery, unfortunately. Now it's that image that people are trying to find the source for. Now the reason why this is important to me is this is lost media, okay? To find the Jeff the Killer source image is to basically find the holy grail of creepypasta images. And that's realistically the only aim that I have. I want to make sure that we can finally end this search, end this, and move on to the next lost image file that we can find on the internet. Now before we go into it, I want to talk about just this group. Now this group is putting in a lot of hours, and the last thing I want is to direct misinformation to go their way. So again, if you want to earn $10,000 and win this challenge, you're going to have to find a new lead that these people haven't even researched if you want to get anywhere into this situation. I'm going to let them explain the best way that they can through a clown uh, video that they've made to basically showcase all the images that have already been debunked. You should snap back to reality, ladies and gentlemen. All the images that you've seen is something that people have sent me numerous times when I was covering this initially when I only put up a thousand dollars. And of course, those images have already been completely debunked. So of course, one of the important things is they've given you some uh, aspects you can go down into. So for instance, image similarity searching using the web archive. And then of course you can do keyword text searching via the web archive. And then of course you can do other things like finding unchecked websites. And they've given entire directions as to how to do this. So you can use things like cacalog.jp, which is a 5CH archive site. One of the many chans that people are scanning, 2chan, 5chan, 4chan, whatever kind of chan. And of course you can search for threat titles, utilizing a set of keywords they have actually isolated for you. You're not able to see these because I just reinstalled Arch Linux and I don't have the Japanese font pack. And no, I'm not going to go through and install it. But of course, what they want you to do is basically be a web search spider and look through any unchecked website that could potentially host the original source image. This might actually be the best possible way to search for it. And it's a time consuming endeavor. And uh, hopefully it's going to be a fruitful endeavor if people actually end up getting to it. So one of the leads that people were looking into that's been debunked, and I'm gonna go through this, uh, you know, through a quick list, is Koged Dombo, which is basically a celebrity, a uh, person that made basically made variety show live appearances, and they were posted on 2chan where people were, again, mocking looks and whatnot. That's kind of what happens with a lot of these chan boards. The internet can be a dark place. Again, this person looks pretty damn good to me, but unfortunately the chance you either have to be a 10 out of 10 or you're going to be hated on, unfortunately for the rest of your goddamn existence. So of course, people were mocking her looks and editing her in different ways, writes one user. It's also possible that the photo was taken from her blog as the quality is awful, much like the phone she was using at the time discovered by Zaft, which would also explain the setting of the image. As Kogedombo likes to remain anonymous, others mistook her for another random person. So again, uh, this is all the way back in the early 2000s. People had Motorola razors, and of course, it's like the luxury phone of the time. Uh, obviously, a lot of phones were sub half a megapixel, so if you were expecting good quality imagery, it wasn't going to happen. This is before we had DSLR grade cell phones, and uh, this is just something you're going to have to understand. One of the other leads was, I typed celebrity before plastic surgery, translated it, and got this very unusual article. Now, unfortunately, a lot of these researchers, a lot of this research and a lot of these leads have unfortunately, if you're going to get any form of, uh, you know, theme out of this, is uh, it's kind of like a uh, random Asian person, let's go look into this. Oh, they've got weird lighting. Maybe it could be Jeff the Killer. It's kind of like my subreddit. We haven't looked at it in a while, but a lot of it used to be, oh, random Indian person, let's put it on r slash some ordinary gamer. Yeah, wild world. But of course, the more you look into it, this image might actually strike you because from a, uh, you know, composition perspective, it kind of does match a little bit to the Jeff the Killer image. So of course, looking at this archive uh, website, the next person to appear was the talent Chan Momo, an early member of the popular TV show Terrace House, became a hot topic when she confessed that she had undergone facial plastic surgery. Originally, he had a boyish impression, but he had a strong complex, and he threw away the photos of his school days, and there are almost no. The single eyelid is doubled by the burial method twice, and the epicanthoplasty, God, these are some wild, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a facial doctor, and the formation of the lacrimal bag create a clear eye. 
In addition, it is said that fat dissolving injections are given to the cheeks and hyaluronic acid injections are given to the nose. So of course, this is just a uh, real, this is just a look on the plastic surgery. So before after image, this image was important in particular, but of course, like the uh, community around it, a lot of people actually try to, again, debunk this. Now, one of the actual uh, leads that people have taken into is going to look through 4chan's various archives. So all the way from back in 2008, which is uh, kind of a little late when it comes to researching this entire endeavor too from a chronology perspective. But you can see people on the internet, people on the threads going, I remember seeing this picture on X forever ago. Some kid took a picture of his one friend and shooped her face to be creepy. Looks to me like he succeeded. No, 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 it's a drawing of a camera taken with a picture. You got it all wrong. It's just some very well done spin art. Probably done at a carnival by the looks of it. All right, all right, OP here. Does someone want to answer the question already? I think we answered it pretty well for you. Again, ladies and gentlemen, it's very difficult for anybody to be on the same page. Again, when it comes to a lot of people coming onto the internet, everyone has a different story regarding this image. And not one of them can absolutely be corroborated, and not any of them can absolutely lead you down to a proper, actual hole to research in. So let's exclude the threads on the chans just for this. To show you when I mentioned earlier going to uncheck domains, which again can be very dangerous too, so make sure you're absolutely safe and you got proper cybersecurity practices before you enter any of these domains. So basically what's happened are people are looking through various chans, going to any domain that they can, that they can find to effectively find one image floating around on the internet. And of course, for instance, if you dig up anything randomly out of it, I'll look up finkshinka.net, you'll see that it takes you to websites like this. People are literally looking through every goddamn link imaginable just to find this specific image. So what's rather an interesting image is one that people found on nikovideo.jp, a Japanese video sharing website. So around 18 days ago, this one while being debunked, I wanted to cover it because it has a video attached to it. And anytime you get media attached to these things, I absolutely love to cover it. I'm new here, but I just found something very weird and I was going through this website when I stumbled on this video. When I saw it, the footage and sound was distorted when I translated because it was Japanese and the description said this. Lost videos have appeared on the internet, especially on message board sites, native to Japan. Rumor has it that our video lasted for a minute and a half but that wasn't all. There were others on the tape, but nothing interesting. The video is set to have another five to seven minutes. Girl tells her friend to get up from bed and she wants to take a nap. Finally, more footage shows only happy girls. She is now approaching the camera, talking, wearing makeup on her face and smiling. She randomly added her filters to her face, thickened the sides of the girl's face with the filters and then removed the effect and the music ends. I'm going to stop right here because we're actually we're going to actually go and watch the video together. It's been linked down over here. It's 032.avi. Now, of course, it's a minute and 16 seconds. So let's just hit play and see what this is all about. So here we go. We've got an actual user. And if you can count the pixels, uh, this is basically what you can expect. Obviously, you can see that maybe in the background, if this was actually a, a proper video, and this was actually, you know, uh, above the resolution of 14p, you might be able to notice clothing in the background. And of course, there's two individuals sitting over here. It's pretty difficult to make out a face in this situation, but uh, had this been Jeff the Killer, all right, I think maybe we could have debunked it. We definitely need a higher quality video somewhere in here because I feel like beyond all of these pixels, this might actually lead to something tangible. Of course, you can tell that the video was uploaded literally last month, this year, with 99 views. Uh, maybe it could be Jeff the Killer, just maybe. But of course, thankfully, because of the community, they were able to, again, debunk this. Pretty cool video, but hoax. It's evident that the description was translated to Japanese, based on the vocabulary and grammar, raising the question why post to Nico when there isn't a search effort, instead of YouTube in English, where there is one. The YouTube channel under the same name says country Japan in the about section while they evidently don't speak the language. Description is sus, says to have blurred and distorted the audio intentionally for private reasons, despite the blur being under the macro blocks, which is true. The macro blocks on the video are a sign of actual video compression, not something that was necessarily done all the way through a video editor. It could be a troll, it could not be a troll, who knows? We definitely need something that's higher resolution than Minecraft pixels to figure out what was actually going on. A pin from a year ago will tell you that these images are not of Jeff the Killer, eight images in particular that I've been sent numerous times. 
and these people obviously been sent too. So you've got one image of this one character over here too, found an old unedited picture of Jeff the Killer on my PC drive. This one was also debunked completely by the community. This one right over here appears to be completely goddamn AI generated, but since it's from a year ago, I'm gonna have to imagine this is just a pretty piss poor Photoshop job. There's a lot of sharpening applied to it, a lot of weird Photoshop effects that I can recognize had I been working on this myself. Absolutely not the original image. Then of course, you've got this image of a child, it seems. Now this one might be the most convincing to somebody looking at it because you definitely could modify a lot of it, especially the mouth, maybe the eyes, so on and so forth. You've obviously got the clothing in the background. This would have been tangible had it not been for the community itself telling us that it wasn't. Now, of course, what do I mean by that, ladies and gentlemen? If you actually go and read into this, you'll find out even on their own Discord, somebody had actually disproven them. For instance, one of the users over here says, I'm starting to regret making this. To which one of the investigators says, did you make it? Yeah, I did a while ago. It's me when I was like three back in 2007 with the Jeff the Killer background. 2007, like it's an old photo of me that I edited. That's why it's a baby instead of an old Asian lady. So of course, you literally have the actual child in the image literally straight up telling you this was a joke post, a fake post, and that's where we debunked it from. Now, of course, number four is just straight up offensive because this is overly attached girlfriend. This is a meme from back in like, what, 2011, 2012, maybe 2010. I saw this shit on Ray William Johnson, and maybe you're too young to know what Ray William Johnson is or this meme, but take it from an old guy like me, this is not Jeff the Killer. And then, of course, you've got some thumbnails from Goose Boost Live. I love Goose Boost, but th this, is, this is not it, Chief. This is not the original image. Again, anything that you've seen on their entire page, if it's pinned, has been debunked in an entire document that I've read the last time we looked into it. One of the other uh, aspects that I was looking into was chain mails chasers. So this one was an interesting image that I ended up looking around where effectively you got to see some people here actually doing proper image analysis, crudely at least, to find out maybe this image was Jeff the killer. So of course, could it be the original image? Well, for that, we're gonna do a little bit of what I like to call debunking in front of you live. Now, Chainmail Chasers is a channel with 2,350 subscribers. I wish they used the old counts, but of course they've got 12 videos and they've got a various amount of content where they look into creepypasta images, the origins of them. So they got the Slender Man, they got Jeff the Killer, Smile Dog, Smile Dog Origins, The Rake, you name it. Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, if you click the About tab to any channel, you'll find out a channel dedicated to finding the origins of popular internet horror images, notably from creepypastas. Videos attempt to emulate a faux movie maker style. Send suggestions in the comments. Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, I don't actually believe this is real. From what we understand, this is just our content, where basically somebody actually creates uh, videos to resemble a researcher looking into a lot of these older uh, you know, creepypasta images. How do we debunk this? Well, in one of the videos that we watch over here with Jeff the Killer in particular, we find out that they actually showcase a website, paranormalprickheads.com. Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, if you actually zoomed into the video, it may not be apparent to you, but I took that entire URL and I decided, let's go to the Wayback Machine and put it in there. And of course, paranormalprickheads.com leads me to a website that has never actually been archived. Now, how can it be that this uh, archive doesn't exist, yet it also exists in this entire video? It's clearly been made as an arg, as a fake little video to basically just be entertaining. However, what was really interesting about this is while it was, in my opinion, from what I understand, designed to be an arg, there was actually a facet of truth behind it. The image in particular referenced something known as the Solar Plexus Clown Glider. So of course, that's an actual uh, page from a wiki known as the Obscure and Legends. Solar Plexus Clown Glider is a collective name given to a broad range of paranormal phenomenon attributed to a corruptive entity which infects weak and vulnerable people through the solar plexus chakra. Originally used in the 80s by New Age practitioners, the phenomenon was linked to a horror-themed email for Wordable in the late 90s. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, chain letters. Remember when we looked at YouTube chain comments? Yeah, back in the early 90s, you got chain letters. And if you, some people were stupid enough to believe that demons were flying all the way through hyperspace. 
So of course the image in particular was one of these cursed images. And this could probably be taken as Jeff the Killer, but obviously it's got film artifacting around it, which uh, would never have been removed in any form of like, um, in, 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 in any form of Jeff the Killer update. And then you also don't have the Jeff the Killer background. And of course, even the face uh, is too blurred. You could literally, this doesn't really appear to be Jeff the Killer. The facial structure isn't there. And of course, it's too blurry. And at this point, you might as well get a different image entirely if you wanted to like build Jeff the Killer. What's interesting though is like when you look at the solar plexus clown gliders, I almost felt like this was another ARG you could go down into. But the only other mention of this is from like a uh, Canadian like museum research, like a gallery system where they talk about digital collages, textiles, animations, video and sound to weave a paranoiac narrative about the dangers of asteroids, chaos, delusions, and interdimensional psychic endoparasites. What kind of goddamn shrooms are you on to be writing this? In my, in my opinion, you do realize Chainmail Chasers is an ARG, right? Shh. Don't, don't shh. This is not helpful to the search whatsoever. These kind of posts are not good and they actually divert from the actual research. But again, I'm including it because I like to at least show you a lot of the disinformation that exists so you cannot repeat this going forward. Again, the entire idea is to look through uh, their methods of research and to actually find new things rather than regurgitate old photos that have been shared a million times in the quest for this original image. One of the other aspects that I found was interesting was one called the Sunoco arc, where people were looking into a, an actual celebrity. Uh, and again, I'll just show it right over here. Sunoco Tsukagoshi was a late 1990s and early 2000s Japanese net idol who was popular in various 2CH and 2Channel boards, which encompassed murderous ugly threads, rape me threads, Photoshop beauty threads, net idol threads, and many others. She was, she was often criticized for her appearance and behavior, namely for being overweight, refusing to work or study, and for having graduated late in her education, age 22. Sunoko was often referred to as gotch, or gotchi, gochi, equivalent to fat, due to her overweight appearance as a means for people to harass and bully her. Initially, Sunoko rejected this nickname, but was later seen adopting it as she began using it across her blogs. Her net idol career began around 1999, when she was in junior high at the age of 14 to 16 after receiving a computer. She began creating websites, diaries, blogs, homepages, and somewhere during that time, Sunoko is mentioned on a thread in the Ochi. This is one of the earliest mentions of Sunoko, but the thread has not been found yet. In 2001, Sunoko became immensely popular and was recognized as a net idol on the Ouch Net Idol 2 channel thread, which identified cringy, painful net idols. Basically one of the original forms of like the quickie. And of course, if you're looking into the levels of research, they've found domains, any form of thread that they can find, fan sites, so to speak, about this character. Threads about them, websites that they've made, and of course, various image links. And the only images links are the ones that they found that basically exist on any banner website from like some Japanese blog. And of course, this is the closest image that, uh, that we can find that's somewhat legible. Well, there are a bit more than that. This is the actual, this is another image. You can see that this is recorded in such an old time uh, that, uh, you know, image, this is the highest quality we have at this moment. And of course, uh, I don't really see what people are bullying her about. She definitely looks pretty decent. So again, again, like I said earlier, unless you're like a 10 out of 10, the chans will rip you apart. Even archiving some of these things can be very difficult because even if you find file images, like for instance, people are trying to find 5205.jpg, because these have never been archived, they are unfortunately lost to the end of time, okay? Unless these things have been archived by the Wayback Machine, finding any living link is just a tall order. Now, this is about one of the only close sort of like leads that we have that actually appears to be tangible. So for instance, the timeline of this is the Sunoco internet career was 1999 all the way to 04. Then of course, you know, you had the image sharing threads in 03 and 04. And then of course, Sunoco's Takedown, which is basically a photo album made by a fan hater to be sold as a CD-ROM. Comments by users mentioning Sunoco defamation posts being taken down by moderators and hosts. It got way too far on and obviously Mod stepped in to kill whatever archive existed back in 04 and 05. And obviously after 05 to 07, Sunoco effectively has gone quiet. 
This might be one of the actual people behind it. Maybe this is the person onto it. Again, I do want to stress that these people do not deserve any form of harassment. Please leave anybody out of it. Obviously, we're trying to find the origin point of an image, not drive any harassment or bring up any form of like harassment whatsoever or, you know, open up old wounds if they exist. Again, this is purely a research focus and this is purely to find the original source image of Jeff the Killer. And to be honest, ladies and gentlemen, that's kind of where the research path ends. So there is a lot to go over and there's a lot that we could have debunked today. Honestly, all I ever covered over here was pretty much the most popular images that I wanted to debunk in front of you. I am putting up $10,000 to find the origin point of one of the most elusive pieces of creepypasta lost media in general. I don't know if we'll ever find this. I honestly have probably given up a lot of hope for it in general, but that's where the internet surprises me, okay? If we can keep things like Cookie's Bustle alive, then hopefully we can find what is one of the most sought after creepypasta images out there. And honestly, this is important to me because of my channel's history. Look, Jeff the Killer was probably one of my most popular videos back when I first started. Honestly, it probably snowballed my channel or at least started that back in the day. And honestly, I have to be thankful to this image for even starting an internet career of mine. So to be real, me putting any money back into it to find the origin point is just me trying to come full circle. And if it's one little homage I can give back to the start of my internet career, and if it's something that I can give back to the community that put me where I am today, that would be an absolute silver lining for me. Again, to start off with, we looked over a few images. I do want to stress, please do not harass anybody that you're researching onto. And definitely, definitely do not spread misinformation on the original JTK Reddit or their Discord. These are just hardworking people trying to do the best that they can. And honestly, follow their directives. The moderators will definitely guide you the right way. And I'm sure they'll be nice to people actually wanting to do proper research on this thread. That being said, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.